A staple I do in all interviews in order to start things off is to ask that you elaborate a bit about your work and this particular role for those not familiar with it. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Minji Chang. I'm the voice of Songbird and Cyberpunk 2077 fan Liberty. And my work, I'm an actor, I am a filmmaker, and um, I've been doing this for a number of years, but interspersed with a lot of different backgrounds. I was studying medicine, I was fully prepared to become a public health worker and, you know, go down that path, but somehow I ended up here in the entertainment industry. I'm super happy about that. It's a childhood dream come true. Um, so technically, I'd say I started acting when I was five years old in, you know, community plays and um, doing musicals and whatnot. And so this whole, this whole world of voiceover and being a professional actor is not something that's been a thing until the last uh, 11 years, but really kind of taking off more so in the last several years. And this is my very first video game role. Um, my voiceover work that I've been doing has been primarily commercial. So that's been a crazy ride. And uh, in terms of the character, uh, Songbird is, She's a, she's an enigma. She's a very interesting character in the expansion of Cyberpunk 2077. And yeah, she's definitely a person for a lot of people of mystery until we kind of get to that part of her story, um, depending on what you choose, of course. And yeah, so I hope I answered the question well. <laughs> in the Cyberpunk 2077, you provide the performance for Songbird. Could you tell us a bit about the character and the situation she finds herself in? Absolutely. Um, so Songbird, is an extremely talented net runner, one of the best in the whole world. Um, and she is the right hand of President Rosalind Myers. And uh, she arrives in the game. I, I, I'm very careful of like learning about this world and also not spoiling anything, but she enters um, the expansion component of Phantom Liberty and has you know it's some information that she shares with V in terms of the future of what can or cannot be done to save her and or him whoever. And um, yeah, they go on a journey together, again, depending on what you choose to figure out how to survive and how to be cured of certain things or potentially not be cured. And that's all I'll say. <laughs> You're fresh to the world of Cyberpunk 2077. What was it like stepping into an established world and being the catalyst for its large expansion? Stepping into Cyberpunk was a, a huge surprise, by the way, I think. Um, it's it's helpful to know that when I auditioned for it, even when I took the role, I didn't know what the project was. And so it was very much uh, a, a blank canvas. I was blind in the audition. I was blind when I said yes to, to Songbird. And again, I didn't know if any of these words were the actual character. I didn't know if this was, and, and everything was like very secretive. So I definitely didn't know what the project was. So when I took the role and not being of the gaming world, I didn't understand the gravity of what I was stepping into. Even with Cyberpunk, I had heard about it because I I think I had heard the residual impact of the, you know, the calamity that was around the first version and how much, you know, there was upset in the gaming world about how that turned out. Um, and then also it's redemption. And so I had heard of the word, I was familiar with it, but I did not know, know how, how big it was. I did not know that it was the Keanu Reeves game. I just, they told me it was cyberpunk and it kind of washed, went over my head and I got right into questions about scheduling and things like that. So it was very piecemeal how I, how I picked, put it all together. But once I understood and I got to, you know, Google and take a look at what I was, you know, endeavoring, it was a really big shock and it was, I was really intimidated. I was nervous that, you know, I think I felt better about it when I went into it blind because I didn't know how big of a deal it was and then took it very seriously that um, you know, I need to do this character justice. I want to provide a good performance so that I can contribute to this incredible world building that CDPR does for this for this game. And um, clearly, something incredible that the fans have really, you know, attached to and really cared about beyond just you know playing a game. It, it's something. It's a world and it's a universe. It's characters that are very beloved, very evocative, and like making people have deep emotional feelings. And so I was really honored, but also definitely overwhelmed. When going to take on the role of Songbird, were you given any initial direction after the sort of coming in blind for the audition in, in regards to your character, just terms of any sort of example of prep work or anything to get into the mindset of this performance? 
just, I think from the get-go, even with the callback, so I had the audition and a callback. So in the callback, I was able to meet our director, Pierce O'Toole, who is, cannot say enough good things about him. I just think he was such a supportive and helpful director and resource for me to understand what I was playing. And so even in the callback, you know, to in order for me to, you know, give the proper callback and play my character while well, he was giving me lots of pointers on, on her personality and again, without knowing what world I'm in and what what the agenda is or the objective, but just give me personality traits of how gritty she was. Um, she's a survivalist, giving me things like that so that I could kind of integrate my interpretation into what Songbird was going to end up being. Um, so yeah, I did have guidance, tremendous guidance from the director and um, me having to take in a lot of different data points from like what I, I went on YouTube myself and I was just watching clips from the original cyberpunk just to get a vibe check and to understand the tone and the kind of music and the the punk rock and you know all of that to to basically educate myself if this is a world that she exists in and then getting um information from the director about who this new character is that they're building and what kind of you know challenges she's going to face and what she's trying to do your character's path is very dynamic in this expansion. What were your thoughts on seeing the differing path options and then performing various ways that your character would end up, as to say? Uh, feel free to tackle it from a spoiler-free perspective or diving into spoilers, but just giving the audience a warning ahead if the latter. Okay. Um, from the spoiler-free version, getting to experience... I, I, as an actor uh, that's more familiar with like the narrative non-video game world where it's a very set course and there is one storyline and you know what the beginning, middle and end is and having the mental emotional preparation to just approach it from a very singular standpoint is in and of itself really fun. And you can kind of like really sink your teeth into it. But then there's certain, you know, I guess I didn't realize until now there's like the con side of it is you don't get to explore the other paths. And in this, it was completely different where the, the choices are not endless, but they're varied. And that was extremely fun for me as an actor to um, basically like flex different muscles and to be really creative and curious and to be able to explore those other outcomes based on like, if you choose this or choose that, the reaction and, and the challenges that and the obstacles that come out of that and the connections and the depth that comes out of this was super fun. So that's a spoiler free version of like, um, doing all the different variations of of the game um i guess the spoiler filled version so you have been warned um getting to know songbird's backstory and to understand why she makes the choices that she did and the betrayals and the lying and the um and and the guilt that she feels and like all those, and that's not in every ending, right? But like some, in one is just like, it's complete and utter chaos and everything's just kind of burned to the ground. But in the other ones, there's um, really kind of getting to the soul of who she is and getting to, and that's what I care a lot about as, as a person, as an actor. I think humans and human beings and even apparently human beings that are turned into, <laughs> to, you know, machinery, the soul and the essence of what makes a person have lived experiences and what we learn and the pain that we experience and the regrets that we have and then what it does to to damage or empower us to make other decisions that's stuff that like i mean i just love learning about that thinking about that and then hopefully in, putting that into characters that i play so when we get to really tragic endings and she's um getting to express her remorse and she's able to say sorry or to express her regret or to show her fear or to, you know, like all those different shades of her. I, it was really hard to play because, it, you know, in playing her, I am heartbroken. I'm, I'm going through those emotions, hopefully as, as accurately as possible to convey what state Songbird is in. So it was a really difficult thing, but I also what I loved the most about playing her is being able to encounter all these different facets of her and to, to yeah to like see her go completely nuts and be the most evil version uh, you know but also like not even evil of her own volition it's like what's happening because of you know of all the all the 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 um technology so and that's like touching on really deep philosophical things that i'm really interested in so it was it was wild and it was really cool yeah, I love that there were deep layers behind your character cuz at first you're you're very mysterious 
And then as time goes on, and it depends a little bit on people's interactions with you too, there's always something in the backdrop of your character that's kind of like going on throughout the story and then eventually it hits you and you're like, oh, wow. And it's just like, did you kind of feel that more as you got to reading those parts? Or was it sort of, you know, you were just almost prepared for the eventualities? I just kind of wondering when it really hits you that like your character is really playing RV essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say this is uh, this is the BTS, I guess, of, of being the voice actor in a video game. In, in my complete noobness, I didn't know, you know, I'm trying to still adjust to the fact that I'm at any given session, we're in a completely different situation. And I'm trying to all the time piece together, like, where are we and where are we going next? And it's it's a very piecemeal process. So that was also what was fun is like, okay, we're in this moment now, Minji, and you got to like, we're going to address this character and this is what's going on. So to like hop in and hop out was a challenge, but that's what I think to me, there was a little bit of a, a delay, I guess. And like really truly gathering what's at stake and like what, what my, my actions and my character are contributing to it. Right. So full acknowledgement, like I it wasn't immediate because I, I didn't even like catch on. Cause I'm just trying to kind of get into all these different modes all the time. But when it sank in, you know, I was given that that general arc at the beginning. So I did have some awareness. And I just think that's that's so brilliant of what CDPR had in mind at every given moment, that at every line, they know where we're coming from and where we're going. And so in the direction that I was given, I was able to to feed into that mystery and to know somewhere in the back of my mind, like this is all these are partial truths. Like you can lie by omission, right? Hugely. So um, having somewhat awareness, but still it took me some time to like fully get into it and understand how how horrible I was being. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was good. I, I really liked you. And like your character really hit well for me right towards the end when I was like, oh my, you just very well done uh, performance from you as well, uh, you know, throughout the story there. Thank you. Uh, what's it like to see your voice attached to a game character? It's one of the coolest things ever. Like I, I'll be, I'll be so honest. I'm not a gamer and I played like Mario and Tetris and duck hunt. Okay. That's also aging me. So whatever, do with that what you will. But I was, you know, a child of the nineties and I, that's kind of the extent of my gaming experience. But since then I've, it's not been in my wheelhouse. So to know, I, I have many friends and people in my life that are very devout and like passionate gamers. So knowing that I was entering that world, I was like, oh crap, this could be really, really cool. Or like I could get annihilated because if I do a bad performance or whatever the case is like, it could be really bad. Um, so watching my character, again, be so well received, even with all of the, you know, the layers of Songbird and, and how much she messes with different players, um, just that appreciation and seeing her in real time and like again having recorded all of this by myself and not with in real time with any of the other actors to hear it so seamlessly woven together and hear us interacting so beautifully it was just such it was such a treat and I've been like I definitely been I was sick for the first two weeks after um the release of cyberpunk but in my you know I was like on my deathbed but still watching on twitch because I was like this is so cool did you envision your character looking like she does just from a sort of because she really leans into the mechanical aspect of the cyberpunk world you know she's got a lot of uh metal kind of elements yeah. to her if that makes sense chromed out is what the word i i get uh i was informed is the word <laughs> that's much better chromed out yeah she's yeah. just got like such a, an aesthetic it's, it's quite fascinating when you're playing you're like oh that's really really quite neat uh yeah Moving onwards, a common question I like to ask about this game in particular is what are your thoughts on the genre of cyberpunk in general? Oh, that's, I hope I, um, what are my thoughts on the cyberpunk genre? I think from what I've experienced so far, I haven't played the game yet. Again, I told you I was on my deathbed for like two weeks and <laughs> yeah. uh, I would love to give it a go, even though I'm really intimidated by it. I think it looks incredibly cool. Like. Just again, not my wheelhouse, not my usual aesthetic, but now that I'm getting to experience it, I'm I'm so intrigued. I think that there's such um, 
kind of like a rebel a rebellious vibe a very like anti-authority vibe and there's definitely parts of me that are very much like that so though even though like I haven't initially been you know like super invested in it I'm definitely interested now I think um there's it's a very like cultural reflection of a lot of sentiment around the world clearly because this is a very like global fan base um of just questioning things and like the the you know the exploring the dark side this is not like a I was telling I had an interview with another outlet where I was expressing like you know my comfort one of my comfort movies is like Pride and Prejudice which is like so not <laughs> cyberpunk right it's like the polar opposite but like exploring that the darker side of self which I love doing as an actor um is really fascinating I think there's there's a lot to like embrace and to understand even if it's like I wouldn't want to necessarily lean too much into my dark side I'm very aware of it I'm familiar with it I've lived it um but I think it's it's a world where you can learn a lot about humanity and like these these themes of like how we coexist poorly a lot of times right um and I think those are always really culturally relevant so I think it's cool that even like in a fantasy immersion of like a game in this made up world you can still find a lot of relevant themes and very true human, you know, ideas and, and experiences to like apply to real life. I think that's a really cool connection that can be created. Well, being specific to this expansion, your character does leave a defining mark on the journey of the player's V. Were there any memorable moments from the voice work or lines that really stood out to you, whether that's something said or even a moment behind the scenes? I can't remember specific lines. I can say like behind the scenes. So at each session when I'm level setting, when I'm getting back into character and like um, testing the mic and making sure that, you know, everything's good to start our session, I would say the lines, the, I know you, you don't know me, but you know, that, that whole segment of like, uh, I can save your life. And that was the line that we would do at the top of every single one of my sessions. And it would like, mm, like I'm reconnected. I'm back in songbird mode. Um, because again, this was interspersed over many months and I'm doing all kinds of other work and doing my commercial stuff where I'm like peppy and selling products. And, like, and then all of a sudden I have to get back into cyberpunk world. It was a very grounding. So that, that line will always have a special place in my heart. It'll always kind of just like put me back into songbird mode. And at the beginning, um, I was getting lines fed to me through Pierce, our director. He was the one reading to me because everyone was kind of at ground zero. And we're all kind of starting to record our stuff. And then over time, we were starting to hear each other. So I didn't get to hear Jeremy, Gavin, no, no one. It was all like at the beginning, just just Pierce. And um, I, I said before, Pierce, I'll say it again. You're a great line feeder. You say like, I'm not a voice actor. I disagree. I think you could do great. But um, when I first started hearing V's, both V's voices, it really kind of brought even more out of me because they bring such a, a, you know, a depth and a gravity to the character. And when I heard later on, I realized, you know, they're hearing me now because they're, we're, we're talking back and forth to each other in their sessions. When Jeremy said to Pierce that I made her cry or that I broke her heart, I couldn't kind of talk for a minute. I was like, I did what? Cause I've been hearing her and I was like, she's so good. She is setting a bar. Like she's V right. And she's this beloved character actor and so good at it. And I looked her up and I saw her credentials. I was like, Oh my God, like, I have to, <laughs> I have to be on my a game to hear that she had had that kind of emotional response to, to songbird. I was floored. It was just like the compliment of a lifetime to hear that. And then also to like, realize that Solomon Reed. They just kept referring to him as Solomon Reed multiple sessions in to find out that, oh yeah, by the way, Idris Selva is playing this guy. <laughs> I was like, what? What? Like they just dropped it so casually. So those are moments I will never forget because it was just a, such a surprise, such a, such a joy. And you're just really in there trying to do the best you can. Um, but I think also the line where, where, Okay, spoiler is coming up. So spoiler, if you don't want it to spoil. Um, when Songbird's asking V to kill her and she's like, I, I don't want to be a shadow of myself. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't remember the exact lines, but the essence is like, who, who even will I be? And I don't even know, like, I'm just going to be 
a, a, an object, you know, and it's like the mercy kill. Right. And that broke my heart and to say, and to like be in that mode of the character. And even when I heard the playback, again, cause you kind of black out when you record, but I went on YouTube and I watched all these clips of my role just to curiosity, like how'd this turn out? And that the delivery of the line with the visual, with the sound design of like, you know, her suspended and like hearing all of the, the echo of the metal and everything. Oh my God, it was just, that was crazy to like relive that and to see the impact after all of this stuff that's happened for her to be at that point. Those are lines that will like really like stick with me for a long time. That was great. And uh, the next question I think is a little bit more fun to some sort of degree. I thought this would be a good little mix up from the heavier points. Uh, there's a certain level of getting V2 work with you as you're playing Songbird. How would you personally sell Songbird to someone that's making a decision of whether or not this should be a character they trust while they're going about doing their work in the expansion? That's a tough question. Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's not fair. <laughs> I know what I know. And then I can't just, um, if I am advocating for Songbird, I think her being a, uh, a, an out, an I don't know if an ally, but like being useful and being trustworthy is like is is how smart she is. She's incredibly capable. You can't find anybody that. I mean, the fact that she's interacting with V is an example of her capability, right? And not anybody can do that. Um, and so I would I would probably leverage that that her her tenacity and her intelligence make her somebody that you'd want on your team. That's like what I would use to advocate for her. Okay. And lastly, I would like to leave a spot for you to say something or go over anything I might have missed during the interview, including if you need to plug anything. I don't know if to plug anything. I would, I, I'm putting this out in the universe a lot. I want to meet my co-stars. That's all I like would love. Um, I just want to, I didn't get to record with them. So that's like my wish. I had the best time ever. It was the surprise. I'm telling you when I took it, I didn't know if I was going to have two lines. I thought I was, I thought I was a minimal character in this new expansion of this game that I didn't know. And at every point finding out um, how significant she was, the, the depth and the layer that, and layers that she has, um, the care that went into the world building and seeing the, the players reacting to all of this and seeing what a journey everyone's being taken on has been so much fun. I am so grateful for it. I am excited to see where it goes, like, because there's still so many people who are still in the thick or just beginning to play it, right? Everyone has their different journey. So I feel like we've gotten that first wave of like the really passionate cyberpunk players that have gotten through it. And it's, I, I feel terrible too, because there's so many spoilers out there. Like really in the first 24 hours, I feel like everything was just like there. Um, but I do hope that everybody has like an incredible journey it's going to be a lot, it's going to be like an upheaval, depending on what you choose. And um, for me, I just appreciate art that makes people think and feel, you know, it could be good, it could be bad. And that's really based on everybody else's choices and their reactions to it. But um, just grateful that I've been so warmly welcomed by the gaming community. And yeah, we'll see what else happens.